you know, you've run so many businesses, you've run large companies, you're almost like a turnaround expert in uh, BFIL also. What would you say are the important qualities a CEO should have? I think one, the CEO should be a team player. CEO is one amongst the many. He's a, let's say, maybe you can call him the first amongst uh, equals. And a CEO is typically surrounded by really uh, domain experts, whether it is a HR head or a sales head or an audit head. So instead of trying to say, I'm the CEO, I'll take all the decisions, getting everybody into the room, and there'll be differences of opinion in this kind of things. You know, he, hearing all sides of the argument and then finally taking a decision, I feel is uh, a good CEO. You should be open to criticism. Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome a very, very senior corporate professional from the financial world, Mr. M.R. Rao. M.R., welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. Um, M.R. is the non-executive vice chairman of Bharat Financial Inclusion Limited, which was earlier SKS Microfinance. He was earlier with American Express, ING Vaisya, Standard Chartered, and other companies. So, MR, let's talk about uh, microfinance. Sure. And for the thousands of our viewers and listeners, let's start by a 101 on microfinance. What sure. is microfinance? Okay. So, to get into the history of microfinance, is basically lending to the poor. Okay. Uh, so, he, uh, historically in India, there have been uh, attempts to uh, lend to the poor and wean away them from the Maya money lenders because they charge usurious interest rates. Right. Uh, the, but uh, it was never successful. So, the cooperative banks, you see the urban cooperative banks, mm -hmm. cooperative, they, they were all started with the design of uh, lending to the poor mm -hmm. in affordable uh, installments. But Professor Mohammed Yunus, who eventually won the Nobel Prize, right. Prize for microfinance, started this experiment way back 40 years back and started mm -hmm. lending to, he started lending to men, then he started lending to women and realized that lending to women was far better because they were far more disciplined in uh, uh, their repayments and the use, use of loans. One of the rules of uh, that he prescribed while giving a loan was that uh, the loan should be used for income generating uh, purposes. Okay. So, the model he chose was a very good model, which is called a joint liability group model. So, you have two models that typically go through the, uh, for the microfinance uh, space. Mm -hmm. One is the bank uh, use, the public sector banks use self-help group models, where there are 20 women who save and the bank gives a loan, but they don't give to individuals, they give to the group. So, mm -hmm. who, who, who takes a loan in the group is kind of uh, not known to the bank. In the joint liability group, the group size is only five. And each woman gets a loan for to start her own business. So in a group of five women, so one could start a, run a Kirana store, one could buy a buffalo and sell milk, and one could run a small tea uh, stall and so on and uh, so forth. So this has been specifically designed and the uh, repayments are weekly. So the whole idea, Professor Yunus finally discovered over a period of time uh, and, uh, and effort mm -hmm. is that if you mimic the cash flows of the poor woman, they are likely to pay you on time okay. because the women don't have access to savings. They don't have access to bank account. Mm -hmm. So if a woman sells milk during the week, at the end of the week, she gets some money. She comes and pays the uh, installment. Okay. And the beauty about the joint liability is in a group of five, each four other women have to approve the loan of this first woman. Okay. And all of them are neighbors. They know each other on a daily basis. They borrow a cup of milk or a you know, ball of curd from each other. So there's always some lane lane going on between them. You know, So they know each other. They know each other's uh, expenses, income and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And giving and taking, as I said, is a day-to-day -day affair. So if a woman falls short of an installment in a particular week, mm -hmm. the other four pitch in and eventually she gives back. 
that's how microfinance started in bangladesh and it became a huge uh, so tell me is there a, is there an amount restriction that you give in microfinance there is no restriction as such but what we do is we follow a disciplined approach of giving a limit in the first cycle when a woman a group joins uh, the company in the first cycle mm -hmm. takes a loan basis how she repays the loan we give an incremental uh, loan the next time around okay so if there is see microfinance the beauty about microfinance is historically it has always been 99.9% mm -hmm. which is unheard of in financial services industry. amazing i agree but the, it is because of the discipline you don't uh, give high loans because the women don't have any income document or income tax document or a cash flow document for you to make it rated up basically mm -hmm. that's why we re rely jointly on the joint liability group okay and each of them has, has to approve the loan as i said so, so if a woman wants 40000 although she might be eligible as per the company's records if four other women say listen we won't support this 40000 loan we'll support only 30000 we'll end up giving 30000 only to very interesting very interesting so you know you have been involved with building this almost from scratch Tell me, uh, what were some of your challenges when you were building the business? So I joined this company when it was, so the SKA started off as an NGO way back in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. In 2005, they converted into an NBFC, non-banking finance company for profit. And I joined in 2006. It had just about 150 branches and 300,000 uh, customers. There was a good standardized uh, model. The, 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 uh, fundamentals of the business the discipline of the field was extremely good the repayment was uh, good it is just that they needed somebody to help them scale up so some of the uh, things which were not standardized earlier we standardized them and helped uh, grow rapidly mm -hmm. so we, in the, uh, for the first four years 2006 to 2010 mm -hmm. we, we grew at a uh, CAGR of 158 percent so the biggest challenge for us was I was the first professional senior management to join this company. Okay. Vikram Akula was the founder who started mm -hmm. it as an NGO. I worked briefly for McKinsey and company. And the rest of the staff, were, it was either first job or second job in his case. Mm -hmm. But I, was, I soon realized that if you want to scale up, you have to get professionals from outside, whether it is in HR or finance or audit or communications and even uh, sales and uh, collections. Mm -hmm. So we got people. The biggest challenge was people didn't know what a case microfinance was. People mostly didn't know what a microfinance was. Mm -hmm. It was just getting into fame because Rahul Gandhi had visited one of the uh, uh, center meetings at that point in time. And it was in the news. So some, some people knew briefly or vaguely. Some people didn't know. So we had to explain the whole thing about microfinance mm -hmm. and get them to join. The second constraint was Hyderabad being a location. Mm -hmm. You know, for any financial services company, it's either Bombay mostly or Delhi at best mm. or Bangalore and uh, Chennai. Mm. So Hyderabad, although it had a lot of NBFCs at one point in time in uh, late 80s and early 80s, none of them were existent uh, mm. at the time we uh, came to this. So to convince them, talk about the value of the uh, ESOP that we are doing, the growth potential. There is a social dimension to this business, right? You're actually helping the poor and so on and so forth. Mm. So it took us a while to get good talent, but each uh, hire was like a sales pitch, uh, mm. you know, to get them to okay. join. So, you know, a question that is often asked, uh, you know, in, in for microfinance companies, and again, this is for me as someone who knows very little about microfinance, is that where do you get your funds from? How do you raise your money? So we are like just like a non-banking finance company. So one uh, source of revenue is the uh, equity capital that we raise. Till we went uh, public uh, in 2010, mm -hmm. a lot of interest was there from private equity players, insurance companies. So we raised capital from them. Mm -hmm. And the working capital you borrow from uh, various banks. Okay. Luckily, microfinance is classified as a priority lending sector uh, by the Reserve Bank of India. Okay. So each bank had to meet its priority sector lending uh, targets. So they are willing to give loans, high, higher amount of loans to companies with good balance sheets, good processes and uh, so on and so forth in good management. And that is where SKS kind of then stood out as uh, you know one of those companies uh, which could get funds quite easily, either from the investors or uh, uh, the banks. Well said, well said. So, you know, uh, when you started, 
this was a, you know there were very few players but today there are many many players oh yes so how would you say you have positioned uh, bharat financial inclusion which is different from so many other players yeah i think um, you know without uh, although i am an ex employee of uh, bharat finance but mm-hmm. without trying to be modest we were known as the gold standard in the banking and the microfinance industry okay. our uh, focus on process our focus on technology mm. our disclosures in balance sheet we were extremely transparent uh, whether it was a audit inspection or a regulator inspection there was no file used to come to the senior management with a question can we give this to the regulator or audit it was a highly decentralized approach our annual disclosures post uh, going public where said to be as good as the best in the industry wow so our management strength was very high we had a very uh, solid management team and their attrition was absolutely minimal or uh, low mm-hmm. in fact there are a lot of uh, people in the senior management the current executive director uh, the company has been there for the last 15 uh, years although the managing director is just 3 years the hr head has been there for 11 years so our attrition has been uh, very very low mm. so i think that uh, helped us uh, stand apart from our uh, peers i agree and you know you, you must have um, supported hundreds and thousands of uh, individuals yes do you remember any one or two interesting anecdotes where you actually given money and that's changed the life of the individual so we have surprisingly we have uh, employees who are daughters and sons of our borrowers or ex borrowers amazing so they could send them to uh, school so if you I mean, you go to the field to go to the field and meeting these borrowers is a very exciting uh, uh, thing it energizes you it tells you despite lack of facilities lack of money how uh, positive uh, their outlook is and how uh, cheerful they are so there are lot of examples when uh, when we went as borrowed from us and when we went on a field visit she, she said can you give me a loan for my son to join engineering uh, mm. degree mm. so and there are instances where she said listen i started this small store and now it's become so big it's all thanks to you guys there are people who said i you know i started with one buffalo now i have five buffaloes i'm sending my children to private school and so on so, so it's done rightly microfinance is a reasonably good tool for women to get out of the poverty mm. line see unfortunately for in the poor segment rural poor segment or anywhere for that matter uh, gen one health catastrophe in the family pulls them down back into the poverty line they take wow. the children out of uh, private schools and so on yeah. So yeah. timely loans from us help them get back on their feet quicker mm. fascinating fascinating and uh, you know you started in in andhra uh, through hyderabad yeah. are you still in uh, one state or have you spread all over the country now oh no no way back in 2006 itself when i joined we were in some seven eight states okay. now we are in some 19 or uh, 20 states in fact we are not we don't have any operations in andhra and telangana oh wow because in 2010 the andhra government passed a draconian uh, act called ap microfinance act mm-hmm. which effectively prevented us from doing business so we wrote off 1500 crores in 2011 2012 and 2013 mm-hmm. and bfil is known also known for its turnaround uh, story having returned one third of the book which and uh, left us with about 200 300 crores of uh, surplus equity we turned this company uh, around uh, at that point of time we were the largest in the world wow uh, you know we but, beat compartamos also but tell me i mean one thing uh, i don't understand you know mm-hmm. when the small lend a borrower mm. uh, returns uh, all the money and this 99.99% is is good money mm. why did you have to write off so much money people just stop paying you is it yeah because the government went to town ap government and saying that we have barred the minor banned microfinance companies from collections and disbursements mm. so the all the political parties got together and each went and said you know the microfinance company no longer are in existent kind of mm. i mean they made the rules so tight that we just to give an example we submitted they said every loan has to be approved by the government mm. we submitted 80000 applications to the government and they rejected all of them wow but all the people who had taken money they just didn't come back and pay 
you know in fact our loan officers when they went out of the branch also office they were arrested by the local police the situation became so bad that we had to tell loan officers not to step out and go home and uh, sit at home yes. effectively it was uh, you know government raj ruling at that uh, very interesting so i want let's then move to a few other questions for you sure. um you know you've run so many businesses you run large companies you almost like a turnaround expert in uh, bfil also what would you say are the important qualities a ceo should have i think one the ceo should be a team player ceo is one amongst the many is a let's say maybe you can call him the first amongst uh, equals and a ceo is typically surrounded by really uh, domain experts whether it is a hr head or a sales head or an audit head so instead of trying to say i am the ceo i'll take all the decisions getting everybody into the room and there will be differences of opinion in this kind of things you know e- hearing all sides of the argument and then finally taking a decision i feel is uh, a good ceo you should be open to criticism and sometimes for specific tasks uh, there are a lot of times when the junior most uh, person also used to be called into my room to give his views uh, second uh, thing is whatever you do whether it's for the staff or for the borrowers hmm. you should take their inputs as a whether our ideas appeal to them if you think you've got a great idea and launch it and it doesn't appeal to your borrowers or customers or the staff hmm. it's going to fail so before you launch it it's better to have a dialogue and a discussion with 20 senior people maybe 100 borrowers or customers to figure out what their use they'll give you dimensions which you would have not even thought about you know i think teamwork in the sense that it's just not about team work between the various departments i think the ceo should uh, lead by calling everybody in whether it's a big decision or a you know reasonably small decision getting people's views on the decision i think is a very important uh, thing the second is uh, humility and you should be approachable mm. i mean normally ceos uh, people are afraid to talk to the ceos are approach correct if correct. you remember people's names including the security guards names mm. and wish them in the morning one of the things in uh, sks for bfil is that when you meet a borrower you should wish her first before she wishes you see i think that got into the dna so most of us senior guys also we wish a junior before he wishes us so you build a level of approachability saying these guys are you know down to earth friendly and therefore uh, fascinates fascinating and you know uh, one more question before i move to a few questions for you personally you know you've been working with a lot of women say in different parts of the country yeah now the next generation the millennials and the gen z are coming in mm-hmm. and you know they are really inheriting the world that we will be leaving behind yeah how are millennials and the gen z's reacting to microfinance you'll be surprised ashutosh that we uh, typically recruit from campus uh, uh, for uh, the area man- manager uh, in the roles basically they are so excited they are so energetic because they are coming from cities or uh, towns mm-hmm. and they are going to villages and seeing this uh, in action for the first time so you, you have people who are very dedicated uh, to the and who are taking this you know we train them a lot we train them for two months and going telling them listen you have to greet just because your lending doesn't mean you are you know more powerful than the woman she's powerful she does if she chooses not to repay you there's nothing you can do so we should before she does give respect to her and they really follow these uh, to the t you know and I, i don't see them in fact my daughter also uh, went to the field mm-hmm. she traveled with the loan officer had lunch with them mm-hmm. and even today and this was some 10 years back uh, even today she says the best lunch i had uh, was in uh, sks branch office Amazing. which makes my wife very jealous but <laughs> that's a <laughs> way people well said well said so uh, mr i'm not going to move to the last segment of our conversation sure i have time for two or three questions for you personally yeah. My first question is in a career which has been so successful and across so many different companies and businesses. What would you say are three key milestones 
in your life or your career? So actually, I am a twice failed uh, businessman, mm-hmm. Ashutosh. Okay. So you know, after my first job, I tried to do business for four years, lost all the money. Luckily, got a job in a company called Descender, which is a hundred percent subsidiary of Wrigley's. Two Standard Chartered. I did again try my hand at business for two years. Although they were failures for to me, I think they were great learning experience. Correct. They humble you a lot. Mm-hmm. It teaches you that. Uh, you know, uh, and in the beginning of my career, when I was a failure, there were very few people who were willing to give a job to a failed business. But in 2000, when I uh, did business, 2002, life had changed. So, so if you're a failed businessman, you are actually, you know, you learn something in Correct. life. Uh, the, uh, I think second milestone uh, in my life was deciding to join uh, his case. I was in uh, ING Vaishya Life Insurance Company. I came to SKS to sign them as a channel partner for selling life insurance. Mm-hmm. And they asked me to go and visit the field. Mm-hmm. I went to the field and got so excited. But I came back and said, I want to join them. They were an NGO at that time. Amazing. Uh, so, you know, I took one and a half years. Yeah, when they converted into an NBFC, they did. And the third I think, milestone, uh, personally, in this sector for me was starting what I call cross sell. You know, we, we realize that the poor pay a premium for everything that they buy. Because when they go to a store and they want to buy a mobile phone, they will, they will never ask for a discount. Mm-hmm. And most, prob- most often than not, the store owner charges them a premium. Mm-hmm. So what we did was we tied up with the manufacturers like Nokia and uh, others. Mm-hmm. And said, we'll buy in bulk. If you are selling for 2000 to the customer, you have to give it to us at 1900 or 1800 mm. and we still got a margin out of uh, that sure. and we used to fund these purchases so we have financed some 30 35 lakhs or 40 lakhs mobile phones mm-hmm. or 30 lakhs solar lamps or a few lakhs of bicycles and so on and so forth and all these were at a discount uh, to the going okay. marketplace very interesting and my last question to you now, and this is, a, you know, a question that I, for the, for the thousands of people who will listen to our conversation, um, and you know, get some wisdom, get some inspiration from what you have said. What would your advice be to a young manager or young individual starting off on her or his journey in the corporate world? So I think learning uh, comes from being humble and open to wisdom or whether it is a peer or a subordinate or the junior uh, most guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, open to being inputs or advice from others is a good quality. To you, humility is the second. If you start going around with a no all attitude, people are not going to okay. And I think you end up learning more in a job, first few years of the job, first 10 years of the job, than you would have ever uh, uh, learned in the past 20 years of your life as a student. That's the second. Third thing is, I think, uh, you have to work more than your share, put in more than your share of workload. Only then you will uh, learn. You have to be curious as to how this works, how that works, you know, and so on. And, uh, and not be afraid to go to other departments also and ask them, how does this happen? And so that you get a fair view of how the company is uh, I think being open to new ideas, learning will, and being humble mm-hmm. is uh, a quality that uh, is. Second thing is, uh, more important than learning, is if you have knowledge, don't keep it to yourself. Okay. He might be your competitor, he might be your colleague, you know, both of you are in the race. But share your knowledge. I think sharing is as important as uh, learning. Mm-hmm. These two, I mean, the sharing part was uh, taught by my mentor. Mm. And uh, you, you should not be afraid to teach people. Finally, what boils down to is execution. Right. Knowledge might be there, execution might be poor. If you're right. confident about your execution skills, right. do not be afraid to share your knowledge. Right. Fascinating. MR, thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for taking me on this incredible journey of microfinance and teaching me so much and I'm sure everyone who's listening to us has learned a lot of new things. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you, Ashtos. Thank you for having me.
Thank you for listening to the brand called You Video Cast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.